Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm the uh, only Chinese uh, speaker today. So uh, first of all, I will introduce myself. And I'm um, Andy Zhou from Shanghai, China. And it's my pleasure to be here to share with you our experience on Zex. And uh, today is my first time to stay here to, I'm so excited and uh, nervous. <laughs> okay, today my topic is how we integrate Zex with big data system. Um, before we get started, let me introduce our company, Grand Age. Our company is a, a professional IT service company in China. And in the beginning, we provide the IBM TV monitoring solution for our use in China. And recently, yes, uh, we become Zaps distributor and uh, to provide Zaps te uh, te technology support in China for our user. And uh, we also built a, a Zaps con uh, community in China and uh, held a Zaps conference in China. Okay, about me. Uh, I'm working uh, at uh, Grand Age as a support engineer and got certified last year as a Zaps trainer. Um, now I'm responsible for Zap training and uh, consulting and techno uh, technical support in China for our user. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, my topic today is uh, case sharing of our custom from China, and uh, it's necessary to uh, look at the uh, customer profile at first. And this custom is the third largest insurance company in China. And uh, before we, uh, we f when we first communicate with them, they have already deployed many commercial monitoring systems. And uh, recently, recently, they plan to replace all commercial monitoring systems uh, with Zap systems. So here I need to uh, emphasize that the number of the hosts will reach uh, 65,000. Okay. Here I listed the types of uh, devices so uh, the custom in uh, the custom provide a production uh, environment. You can see that uh, various of operation system, database, uh, database, middleware application, and some hardware devices, uh, virtualization such as cloud and so on, and uh, huge and uh, complex environment. Okay. A uh, large number of the devices and uh, complex environments leads to a uh, lot of um, pain points. So let's uh, let's see what we are, uh, what the trouble our custom have. And first of all, there are many commercial monitoring uh, systems, different system, different loose. So the monitoring loose is inconsistent. It's hard to achieve. You did find uh, management, and the monitoring depth is not enough. And uh, as we know, the uh, commercial monitoring system is not uh, flexible enough to control by themselves. And uh, the, uh, the commercial uh, monitoring system is independent of each other, so the data interaction is uh, insufficient. So uh, the custom uh, decided to uh, choose an open source monitoring uh, system to uh, improve current status to uh, so with this problems, okay. And there are many uh, popular opening, uh, open source uh, monitoring uh, systems in the market. And why we choose Zex? Actually, before uh, before the customer finalized the solution, they have already uh, did more than one more than one year of research and uh, test. They found that. Zaps is the best open source uh, monitoring solution, uh, system for them, and its installation and deployment is easy, and uh, Zaps is powerful, scalability, and uh, flexible. At the same time, uh, the, uh, the, the customer care about the, uh, the uh, web, use, uh, web interface. Uh, Zaps, uh, uh, the web user uh, interface is friendly, so it's easy to use and uh, management. Okay, uh, another important thing that Zaps is written uh, in C language, it had a good performance and a low TCO. So uh, uh, we think Zaps is the best choice for them, of course. Okay, 
And uh, I mentioned that the uh, research and the test, uh, the, uh, the, uh, this is the result of the uh, pleasure test did by our custom and to verify the performance of depth. And here you can see the MVPS is more than 60,000. So it's a, a huge environment. OK, uh, after the, uh, the custom decided to use depth as the um, uh, monitoring solution, we started to uh, design the system architecture for them. So, and then, here, some more detailed data of the custom production environment. And we can see the number of hosts will reach more than uh, 65,000 and uh, uh, 300 items of each, other, uh, each, each one and from, from each and the 60 second interval. So we calculated that the MVPS will more than three, uh, three, 325,000. So we are. Actually, we are facing a big challenge. Okay, here is our, uh, our architecture, uh, HA architecture, and we built HA architecture for our custom. We use Keep Live open source to, uh, to improve the uh, HA architecture of Zabbix server and Zabbix proxy. Maybe you or you use Pacemaker, <laughs> we use Keep Live, the same. And uh, under, the, uh, under this structure, uh, if the ZEP system load is too high and we can inc uh, increase the number of the proxies to uh, share the pressure. Okay. And uh, we deployed several ZEP systems with high availability architecture to uh, monitor different ELs and a different type of devices. And here you can, uh, we can see Every uh, each ZEP system is a unit. Is a unit. Okay. We also developed a ZEP configuration management uh, system to operate and manage manage the all ZEP systems via ZEP API. So at the same time, we can tra uh, export and transfer the uh, the, uh, the data exported by all ZEP systems to a bigger data system. This is, uh, that's what, uh, that is uh, what we call distributed center management architecture to develop by us. Okay, and uh, after we built the uh, architecture and uh, we, did, uh, we started to test, and during the test, we encountered some problems, such as there are a lot of uh, gaps in the graph, uh, graph and uh, a lot of queue, and, uh, the uh, data set query is so slow, and uh, we realized that we must optimize the ZEP system. And uh, uh, what we did, and uh, the following optimizations, and such as we uh, replacing a patch with up engines, and uh, we optimizing uh, the uh, configuration uh, command, uh, parameter of the ZEP server and uh, MySQL, and uh, we use SSD storage and uh, uh, improve the uh, hardware and so on. After this optimizations and the, the performance of the ZEPS is improved. Okay, here is the re result after the optimizations and uh, we can see the uh, ZEPS front end query become faster and faster and uh, no, no queues. Okay. And uh, we speak uh, data and uh, data system many times. So uh, what is data and uh, how we use it? How to use it? OK. Uh, actually, uh, usually we uh, divided uh, um, IT operation and management into three strategies, ITOA and I, uh, ITOM, ITOA and AI ops. And in ITOM, we just use some monitoring tools to monitor and management, uh, manage the IT devices, just to do it. And ITOA, we can do some data processing, data analysis, and some uh, associate, and so on. AI ops mainly use big data technology and learning, uh, machine learning to uh, further processing and analysis the data. OK, we can see that most of users uh, are still in uh, ITOM stage. Uh, maybe in China, <laughs> and uh, uh, 
we have to see that no matter which stage you, uh, which stage the data is the basis and uh, the core of the analysis and the processing. So this is the value of the data. Okay. Uh, in our case, we use that to collect uh, all the data the customer want, and such as uh, operation system data, database data, application data, and a lot of kinds of data. And uh, the customer can view the data on Zap's dashboard as well. And as, at the same time, we can uh, export and transfer the data to the other platform for uh, data storage or data processing. OK, there are many kinds of data. And uh, uh, after we collect, uh, after the data collection, many uh, users will maybe have some problem. Uh, the monitoring system, uh, monitoring system collect so much data, and how we use it? Use, it, use huge uh, uh, data. OK, here is an example. We uh, collect the data, uh, the uh, log of DB2 database uh, by Zex, and we transfer this data to big data system for uh, data uh, processing and uh, analysis. And this is the final result. And uh, this is the final result. Okay. Oh. <coughs> we collect so much data, and uh, uh, too bad to use the data collected by all Zex system. We decided to integrate Zaps with big data system, and uh, I will show how we did it. First of all, we use bit, five bit, and we know, as we know, uh, five bit is the uh, uh, component of data transformation for Elastic, and uh, we use it because it has good perform, uh, it has good performance and uh, low uh, resource cost. So we make a decision to use it. And here is the data flow. And uh, uh, we, we need, to, uh, first of all, we need to add uh, or configure the JSON data path and uh, the size of the JSON data in Zap's configuration file. After that, we can use Firebit to transfer the data to Logstash. And uh, in Logstash, we can do some processing and uh, analysis and, uh, and so on. After we uh, after data processing by Logstash, we can transfer the data to Elasticsearch, and at this time you can view the data in uh, Elasticsearch on Kibana. And uh, of course, if you uh, if you don't need to uh, determine with this JSON data immediately, you can you can transfer uh, transfer data di uh, directly from Firebit to uh, Elasticsearch as well. That's also support. That's also support. OK. And uh, we can also use Kafka Crust. Uh, similarly, and uh, uh, we can uh, transfer the data uh, processing by Logstash to Kafka Crust. And uh, similarly, uh, if you don't need to deal with the data immediately, you can transfer data directly from Firebit to Kafka Crust. That's, uh, that's OK. And uh, uh, you can choose uh, any way you want. You can change it any way you want. OK, we have another way. And uh, we use Spark to uh, replace, the, uh, replace the Logstash as well. And it can work the same. OK. Here we must say thanks to, to uh, Zapstein for uh, this good, uh, this such a good uh, feature, data export, and we can easily to uh, do some uh, data export. And uh, uh, we need to uh, configure uh, the size of the uh, JSON file and the path of the JSON file in the Zap server configuration file. So after that, we uh, restart the Zap server and. Uh, we can see the JSON data file. And the JSON data file content historical uh, JSON data and uh, uh, problem JSON uh, event data and uh, chance data and so on. OK. Here we used historical data. And this is the JSON data. And there are a lot of 
data we, uh, we need, such as host name, host group, and application name, item name, and the value. This is the data we want. It's, it's very clear. OK, next, after the data is exported, so how, we to, how to transfer the data? And we uh, use Fabit. And at this time, we need to configure Fabit. In the uh, configuration file of Fabit, we need to add the, uh, the, 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 the data you want to send, you want to transfer, and the encoding, uh, the, uh, the encoding, coding, and, uh, and the, the data where you want to send. After that, you start the, the Fabit service, and you can see the uh, load the file successful. It works. OK, after Fabit, uh, works and we need to configure Logstash. As we know, uh, Logstash has two required elements, input and output. And, uh, uh, and, and one optional uh, element is filter. And what different? Uh, input element, we can define the data source and which data you want to send, you want to transfer. And the filter element, we can define Processing rules, and uh, you can uh, you can do anything you want, and this uh, this rules can define in the effect uh, filter uh, element, and output element is defined where the data you want to send. Okay, after all this step done, we can start logstash. Okay, uh, in logstash we can do uh, data. Uh, filter, converter, split, and uh, cut, and so on. And we can do a lot of operations of uh, uh, data uh, to uh, operation to fill out the data we don't need. Okay. And after that, we can transfer the data to uh, Elasticsearch or Kafka Crust and uh, as well. Here, here we transfer the data to uh, Elasticsearch this example, and uh, we can see the data in a storage in uh, Logstash, and uh, we view the data on Kibana. Okay, that's all depth data. And here's the more detailed, it. and you can see more detailed information. Okay, this is uh, data, uh, how about the Kafka, Kafka crust? And uh, this is the data uh, processing by Logstash and uh, uh, transfer the data to Kafka Crust, and this is the Kafka. Uh, this is the data on Kafka side, and you can you can see it. This data uh, processing by Logstash. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, final result. After the Logstash processing the data and the transfer the data to uh, Kafka Crust, and the big data system can use this data to, uh, for uh, data further processing, analysis, enrichment, and so on. So many kind of operations. And this is the final result. And uh, this is the prehensive, uh, prehensive view of the data. You can see uh, such as uh, uh, not location and uh, a status and uh, first operator uh, and so on. The more detailed information. So uh, the event is in the content is in richer. There are some Chinese maybe you didn't understand. Maybe if you want to know, I can transfer for you. <laughs> okay. That's all. Finally, that's all. Thank you. Thank you for your listening. Thank you.